Nerdfember is here and I just wanted to make a video sort of showcasing my process for making this first day prompt which was cookie. A lot of people have been asking about the vector displacement so I figured I would just show the whole process as a time lapse here. So here we go. So you're watching here me having started at the point where I have a sphere and I've given it a subdivision, uh, adaptive sub subdivision and I've told the material to be displacement and bump. And then just to get started, I'm trying to work out how I'm going to mask off my two sections. I know I want to do the, the cookie dunk in the milk, and so I need this to be in two halves. I'm using an add-on here called UV Toolkit, just to align that to the grid very quickly. Um, I'm using a round cube instead of a sphere, so I need to do the UVs myself if I want to use UVs. I could have used uh, generated coordinates, um, which is kind of the key method with vector displacement, uh, but I ended up using a UV map just because it was what I thought of at the time. Um, so predominantly I, I do each half like one after the other. Uh, so I'm starting off with the cookie here. And the key thing with vector displacement is that you're gonna be using uh, generated coordinates because these seem to come with the mesh even when it's displaced. Whereas object coordinates, they don't. Uh, also generated are kind of, um, they don't really care about the mesh. Whereas UV obviously follows it and it relies on your unwrap. Um, so you can see we've come forwards quite a long way here. I've got the general shape. I've basically squished it down a little bit and worked on the transparency for that top edge. And I've used a 1D noise texture, which is just going in the X axis from left to right. And I've added that to the Y just to move it a little bit of wobble along the top edge. Um, and I've used the uh, smooth F1 subtract F1 Voronoi to give me the big crackle with the soft internal corners. You can see that on my stone wall tutorial as well, I use that. Um, and now I'm adding chocolate chips by taking away a Voronoi at a certain size and then adding a smaller version. So you get the divot and then you get the Voronoi poking out for the, uh, the chocolate chip. Um, here I'm using an RGB curve just to try and get like a more organic top shape. I want it to look like somebody's taking a bite. So I need that kind of semicircular shape out of the top and uh, RGB curves I'll do a proper tutorial on this but RGB curves are really useful because they let you have manual control over over the points and um, because we're using generated all of the surface that we've kind of worked out it comes with the mesh so this is going to let us do all of our texturing with masks that already exist for our displacement and I'm doing something interesting here so basically I've made a group with my principal BSDF inside it and I've got my my masks coming in. So this is the mask between the transparency that cuts out the middle section as well as the mask that separates the top half and the bottom half. And I've got my array of mixed RGBs inside here. Each one's coming off the top and bottom mask just so that I can control um, and have sockets on the front of the group for like cookie color versus the glass and milk color or the, uh, the roughness or the subsurface color or the um, subsurface amount. And I think I had um, a few other things on there as well. I think, oh yeah, I've added bump as well at this point, just to give me that additional detail. And I had a high frequency noise pattern just everywhere except from on the wood chips, <laughs> the chocolate chips, sorry. Uh, I wasn't too happy with the material. I think it was too hard. And a few people pointed out it looked like the surface of a baguette. So uh, yeah, but I kind of, I ran out of time. It was about 5 a.m. by the time I finished. So I, I was just keen to be done. Uh, so what I'm working out here is how to do rotation because I need to have a bit more manual control when I'm animating this. So I was trying to work out a way to do rotation properly. And I found this answer on a Blender Artist forum post um, where apparently if you take the object coordinates, it doesn't work with generated, but object coordinates into a vector rotate, and then you subtract the object coordinates from your rotated coordinates. And you could just add this your main displacement and that lets you rotate just with the rotate node which is amazing and um, so you can see i just set up a scene there really quickly just added a couple of lights i added a, an hdri from hdri haven and i've got a sort of curved backwards sort of curved uh, internal corner there just for the just to avoid a horizon line and now what i'm doing is i'm taking the other half the not cookie and i'm trying to work out how i'm going to turn a flat disc so i've just Taken my semicircle and made it flat just for ease, just so I've got a flat thing to work on. And just working out how I can control my up and down 
so that I've got that extrusion, but obviously I don't want to be just pulling directly up. I need to be also pushing additional vertices in because I don't want to have any shearing issues. I want to have all of my uh, topology fairly like well spaced so that you don't get any shading artifacts, especially because this is going to be transparent. Um, on my, I'm using two RGB curves here. I've got one for my X and Y because it's circular. I can just calculate them both at the same time and one for my Z. And on the Z, you can see that I've gone from having the vector handles on the RGB to having uh, auto handles, which give me a rounded top corner, which is going to be useful because I want it to capture rim light. Um, what I'm doing right here is I'm just adding uh, the materiality. So I've made the glass into actual glass with transmission. Uh, the IOR was a, an issue, so I, I reduced it right down to like 1.05, I think, or 0.7. Um, and I've added subsurface as well to both the cookie chips, the chocolate chips, and the milk. So both of those have subsurface scattering. Um, what I'm doing in this bit is I want to make sure that my cookie can look wet once it's been dipped into the milk. So I've added a mask that just goes across it horizontally. And this, uh, I can adjust the height of it easily and it controls uh, a color it overlays a color onto everything or it screens sorry it screens a color onto everything um, and it also makes the roughness down to zero so it's shiny and it also reduces the bump so that it's a smoother surface uh, so my technique for animating is i take a value node with hashtag frame in it so that it has a driver for the frame number this then goes into a map range which i remap the uh, the, the frame range that i want to animate so in this case, 0 to 300 is what I use for most, because that's the length of my overall thing. Um, and I remap that to a 0 to 1 range so that I can work with it with an RGB curve. This gives me manual control. And then I, again, add another map range node afterwards, which goes from 0 to 1 and takes that value to a value range that I want. So for rotation, this was like minus 0 0.2 to 0 0.2. Or for the, um, the up and down displacement, I think it was like 0 0.5 to minus 0 0.9 something like that. Um, I ended up with a few stretching artifacts between the top of the cookie and the bottom of the glass because those were technically still connected, although they had an alpha on them. Um, these artifacts were caused by not having enough transmission passes, uh, transmission and transparency. So sometimes there were, I basically just needed to turn them both up. I had them set both quite low, I think around four. Um, and sometimes when the top of the cookie was a bit more serrated, you were looking through many more layers of alpha. Um, so I'm still just working through the rotation here, making sure everything's animated quite nicely. Um, I just want a natural kind of as if it's handheld, basically. So it was a little bit difficult to work. This video is obviously sped up a lot. I think it's maybe 30 or 40 times faster, but uh, it really was not anywhere near real time. I was having to do about a frame and check it every second. I did do a test render at one point where I did 200 by 200 squares um, just to try and render it quickly, but still it was not having it. So uh, the way that I like to do a kind of a display to show that it's on a real sphere is I set it back to a sphere by scaling down the displacement. And then I also, I want to do this clay wipe. So I've added a radial texture and I'm just using a compare to take a block of clean around it and I'm mixing just with a standard diff, uh, uh, diffuse shader rather than a the node group that I used. So in this bit I am, when the cookie dips in the milk I want there to be ripples on the surface and I didn't have any way to check the speed of the ripples so I've just opened a new file. I'm just adding a noise basically to that surface and I wanted to check the speed that I was affecting the W on the 4D noise. And uh, I'm mixing that together with a circular gradient, uh, a, like a length gradient out from the center, um, just so that I can taper it down towards the edges so the edges don't move. Um, and now what I'm doing is I'm doing the same thing with the RGB curve, and I've just positioned it above the timeline so I can set the frames uh, to basically make sense with my points on the RGB curve. And it's the same process again, map range before, map range after. And this just goes into the uh, into the strength of the mask that mixes them. So that's it for the uh, this time lapse. Hopefully, 
this has kind of gleaned a little bit of insight into my process. I'll do a proper tutorial on vector displacement at some point because it's it is a big topic and obviously this month especially people are going to be using it a lot so I'll try and crack that out in the next few days. So yes, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one.